Thanks, Liz. As I mentioned earlier, we are especially pleased this evening to welcome His Excellency Dr. Dino Pati Kalal, the Ambassador of Indonesia to the United States. The Ambassador is continuing his family's important tradition of public service to Indonesia, previously as spokesman for, the, uh, for Indonesia's president most recently, and now I'm pleased to say as Indonesia's Ambassador in Washington, D.C. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the Ambassador. Assalamualaikum, shalom, ni hao, hola, and as you say here in America, what's going on? <laughs> and for all your Trekkie fans out there, live long and prosper. <laughs> I can't help it, I just saw the film on the way back there from a, from a plane. Uh, Dr. Kam Lin Su, uh, you get the proclamation of Tan Lin Su Day, and I get a parking ticket today. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mark Doster, President of Cal Asia Business Council, Executive Director of Cal Asia Business Council, Jeremy Potash, and Board of Directors of Cal Asia Business Council, Consul Generals, uh, members of the Consular Court in San Francisco, dear friends. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Dino Matijala. I am from Indonesia. My staff calls me uh, ambassador. My wife calls me uh, honey, pumpkin, or turkey, depending on the conversation. <laughs> but let, let me just ask my wife to, to rise. Uh, this is Rosa. She's, uh, she's a dentist. And, and I know what you're thinking, and yes, every Indonesian dentist looks like that. <laughs> uh, I'm very honored to be here, me and my wife, and the whole Indonesian Diplomatic Corps. And I want to say special thanks and special appreciation for California Asia Business Council for all your hard work in promoting bridges between America and Asia, uh, and especially uh, with your cooperation with uh, Indonesia. I'm very pleased to tell you that President Barack Obama had just been in my country and uh, it was not just a bilateral visit, it was a very historic visit that transformed the relationship between Indonesia and America into a comprehensive partnership. And it was quite an emotional uh, homecoming uh, for us in Indonesia because we don't see him just as uh, uh, a, uh, an American we also see him as an inspiring example to many young people in Indonesia. He was received like a rock star in Indonesia. <laughs> and, and the speech that he gave at the University of Indonesia, it was the first time in our national history that an American president, or any heads of government for that matter, gave a speech that was televised to all of Indonesia. Uh, and it was such an uplifting uh, speech. And it was a speech that redefined Indonesia-U.S. relations. And it was a speech that also uh, increased the appeal of America in the eyes of uh, many Indonesians. Now, I'm so glad that President Barack Obama made that trip to Indonesia and to Asia. You know, it's very important because uh, for some in Asia, there was a feeling that uh, you know, America had been so preoccupied by Iraq by Afghanistan and uh, with 9-11 that they became somewhat distracted from focusing on the larger picture on how to connect with Asia in recent years. And it is very important for America in the first decade of the 21st century to get Asia right and also for Asia to get America right. Let me tell you at least three reasons why this is important. One, as Dr. Tangling Su has indicated, the geopolitical, the strategic, and economic weight of the world is shifting fast to Asia. Uh, Asia is home to uh, two of the world's most populous nations, India and China. Two of the three largest economies in the world are in Asia. Three of the five largest militaries of the world are in Asia. Uh, Asia accounts for 45% of the GDP of the world half of the world production and almost half of the trade of the world. 
Now, these are important numbers, but it's not just because of these statistics that Asia should become important to America. A key reason, and this is secondly, is that in Asia and across Asia, you see now a new dynamism, a new self-confidence. You know, irregardless of the political systems uh, that are different uh, in Asia, and irregardless of the hotspots uh, and flashpoints uh, in, in Asia, this dynamism is unmistakable. I just came from China, for example, uh, to see the Expo. Uh, and you can see in, in China, there's a new mindset. You know, the Chinese today are very different from the Chinese 40 or 50 years ago. The Chinese, when they do things, whether it's Expo or Olympics or other things, they just want to do it as the best in the world. They're not running for second place anymore. Not third place, but they're running for first place. That is a new mindset. In Indonesia, uh, for so many years, we were uh, preoccupied internally. Uh, we had some self-doubts, but now we are confident democracy and we're confident of our position as the world's third largest democracy and a country where there is uh, Islam, democracy, and modernity can go hand in hand together. Malaysia is one of the top trading nations in the world. India is rising. Uh, Korea uh, is trying to beat everybody in the world of manufacturing. Singapore is trying to be the global cosmopolitan city. You know, all across Asia, you see the sense that the 21st century belongs to Asia, and it is for us for the taking. The third reason is that if you see across Asia, and you see countries in Asia, you draw lines connecting all these countries. You see relationships are changing. Relationships between Indonesia and China are changing. Relationships between China and India are changing. Relationships between Vietnam and Australia are changing. Australia and China are changing. Relationships between uh, ASEAN and, and uh, the major powers are changing. Across the board, relationships are changing in Asia. America should engage and be part of that dynamic change. This regional architecture is still very fluid. You, know, you still have the East Asia Summit, you still have the APEC, you still have the uh, uh, ARF uh, and all the other organizations, and it is still finding the right format to find a sustainable and durable uh, institution of regional architecture. The United States should be engaged very actively in these efforts to promote and shape this regional architecture. I had a discussion with a friend in Washington, and he said, well, let's see if EAS will become important. Maybe then we'll throw our weight behind it. I told him, no, you're wrong. If you do that, then you leave, you lag behind everybody else who is shaping the regional architecture. Don't wait until it becomes important. Join it and write it and shape it. And this is the attitude that America must have when it deals with uh, Asia. In Asia now, everybody's talking about the Asian century. Uh, and I think we also realize that as we believe this can be the Asian century, we cannot be the Asian century without America, without a strong America economically and politically. And I know all of you in America want to reclaim the 21st century as the American century. And I'm sure you all will realize also that you cannot reclaim it unless you have healthy engagement with Asia, which is now driving the economic, the global economic recovery. I have one thought, one final thought to share with you on this matter. For so long since the Declaration of Independence, 1776, the American political thinking has been shaped by the European intellectual tradition. Right? Uh, this has gone on for centuries. I think as you try to reclaim the American century, and as American ideals have inspired Asia as well as the rest of the world, I think now is the time that you give more room to Asian wisdom in the American national ethos. Right? Now, uh, the reasons or the catalysts are many. Uh, there are more and more Americans now, so there are more and more Asians now climbing to the top of America's political, social, and cultural establishments as we see very much in this room. And America now is very different than America that I lived 
1970. So I lived here in Brooklyn in 1979. And America then did not feel to me very multicultural. But today, as I return as ambassador of Indonesia to America, America feels so multicultural. You know, we see so many languages, so many ethnicities, so many cultures, all uh, mixing together in some beautiful construct. And I think it is time that more and more, uh, as more and more Asians are climbing these American political, social, and cultural establishments, uh, the Asian wisdom, this rich thousands years old collection of Asian wisdom, which has found healthy expressions throughout many Asian political and social systems, can also help shape how America defined itself in the 21st century. I thank you.